Western Kentucky, you talk about a team that is changing a lot this year. Uh, Tyson Helton and in that bunch, I mean, you can't lose as much on the offensive side as, as they did and expect to have anything even close to what they had last year. But uh, they are certainly going to try. You look at their numbers here, number 55, or sorry, number 104 in returning production. That's 55%, but the offense is where they really hurt. Only 43% returning production. They had a bunch of guys transfer out, as well as losing Bailey Zapp to the NFL. Zach Kitley, of course, went back to Texas Tech. That's going to hurt. Um Mitchell Tinsley transferred out. The left tackle, Cole Spencer, is gone. Right tackle, Mason Brooks, is gone. Jeremiah uh, uh, Stearns, excuse me, is gone. Like, this is... I said Jeremiah. It's Jareth Stearns. Good gracious. My my mind is everywhere today. My apologies, guys. Uh, So, with Western Kentucky, let's look at the offense here. Their numbers last year were, like, blow you off the page kind of stuff. At number three in PPA per drive, number 15 in rushing success rate, number three in passing success rate. And you know what? I'm going to zoom in on this. There we go. You might be able to see that a little bit better. Uh, PPA per drive, number three. Rushing success rate, number 15. And this is for a team that really didn't run the ball all that much. They were much more a a flinging around the yard kind of offense. Uh, The passing success rate, number three. Explosive play rate, number 48. And I know everybody looks at that and says, wait a minute, explain explosive play rate. It, it's just what it says. Uh, they ran a ton of plays last year. Like, a total plays per game for this team, they were number three in the country. So, yeah, you're not going to break a ton of explosive plays in regards to or compared to the rest of the plays that you run when you run that many plays. So, yeah, they did have some explosive plays, but uh, when, it, when you look at the numbers, it's not quite that much. So they, they were still very effective. Turnover margin, they were number 12. As many plays as they ran, they really did not turn the ball over that much, and they were able to get turnovers from the other team, so that's definitely good. Looking at the changeover in offensive coordinator, 26-year-old offensive coordinator and quarterback coach Ben Arbuckle. He was the assistant quarterback coach and an offensive quality control coach last year. This guy learned under Kitley, and, and he is the youngest coordinator in Division One football I'm curious what this is going to mean. And obviously, they want him to run the same thing that Kitley ran. Does he have the leadership qualities to be able to do that? Does he have the same kind of ideas? Or is he going to change up the philosophy a little bit? And does Tyson Helton trust him enough to allow him to do that? I'm not 100% certain. This offense lost a lot of talent as far as roster strength goes, thanks to our guys over at CFB Winning Edge. They were number 113 out of 131 in roster strength on offense. That is not good when you were trying to come up with something that can uh, go fast, etc. You need talent in there to do that, and you need depth. And I don't know that they've got either of those. They do have some talent, for sure. They they got transfer quarterback Jared Dagey, the starter, coming in. Um, the question there, of course, if you watched the Bet U.S. College Football Show with us last year, Jared Dagey was known on our show as Schrodinger's quarterback. You never knew what version of him you were going to get. He's going to be running something completely different in this than he did at West Virginia uh, and and before that at Bowling Green. So uh, can Austin Reed from D2 West Florida beat him out? I doubt it because Daggy's been around forever. He's a senior. He's got a good work ethic from everything that I've heard. Uh, And I put on here, like, what will the offense even look like? I would imagine it looks very similar to what Kitley did. But can you do that when you're missing some of the guys that they are missing now? Starting offensive lineman left, along with the wide receiver Stearns and Tinsley. Um, Yeah, and then the quarterback, of course. Uh, The offense is going to rely on transfers at basically every level, but not to the same extent, I guess. Uh, This is going to be interesting to see what they end up doing because this team leaned on that offense last year. Uh, And that'll lead us into the defense here. The new D.C. is Tyson Summers, who, of course, was the head coach at Georgia Southern not that long ago. Uh, He was a former Colorado defensive coordinator. So, 14 players return on this defense with 300-plus snaps last year. That's good. You've got experience there. The defense was putrid last year, but again, that's because the offense moves so fast. Anytime you have an offense that runs like that, the defense is going to take a step back. They were number 93 in defensive uh, points predicted, predicted points added per drive, so PPA per drive. 
Uh, number 96 in rushing success rate allowed. Number 96 in passing success rate allowed. But they were number 31 in explosive play rate. So that's good. Uh, the question, of course, is like how many plays were actually run compared to how many explosive plays. So uh, with, with the offensive philosophy change or what we assume will be a slight change, what are we going to look like on defense here? Um, they're studs on defense. The, the defensive end, Jones, linebacker, Hunter, all that. The efficiency in this situation is going to be linked to the offense. This is such an interesting program with Western Kentucky. Uh, you never know what you're going to have from year to year. And they have gone from being one of the best defensive teams in Tyson Hilton's first season to not really having any kind of an identity in the second year. Third year, they're a highly uh, offensive team, right? You bring in Kitley and you bring in that Houston Baptist offense. And now... I don't know what the actual identity of the locker room is, what they want to be. Do they want to be this high-flying offense? Do they want to go back to where the defense is actually pretty good? I'm not sure. This year is going to be pretty interesting, I think. Uh, keys to the season here, offense likely to regress. Defense has to be better. Uh, the offense coordinator, Ben Arbuckle, is young. Um, do they attempt the same offense? I'm going to ask that question over and over and over again. I, I just want to know. I do have a lot of faith. In Tyson Hilton, I believe he can be a good coach. Uh, I don't know if he can figure things out this year. Uh, the early season schedule is forgiving, and they have a bye week before they play against Indiana. Uh, transferring in an entire offense in 21, and now they lose all of it, uh, that's concerning. Like yeah, They lost 11 guys to transfer. What, what do you gain? What does your program gain from something like that? It, they did get a lot of pub last year for the kind of numbers that were put up and everything, but when those guys leave, what does it mean going forward? It, was it just an extension so that Tyson Hilton doesn't lose his job earlier? Or, you know, I, that's what I'm curious about for this season. Looking at the schedule, I've got them at 6-7. and seven. They do play Hawaii early. They play on the road at Hawaii in Week 1. They've got a Week 0 game against Austin P. You can get wins in both of those. Even as you were trying to figure things out, you have a bye week before you play at Indiana. But this looks like a 6-7 and seven kind of football team to me. Uh, even with the 13 games, it's just, I mean, you've got some rough games. They play at UTSA, at Indiana, at Hawaii, at Auburn, at Charlotte, at Florida Atlanta. This, this is tough. This is very, very difficult. So, while I am curious about everything that's going on with this bunch, Number 104 in returning production and a schedule like this, six and seven, and that'll get them to a bowl game. I think that would be a success. Now, do I think that they could probably lose more than seven games? Yeah, yeah. Do I think that if everything goes right and Arbuckle's offense is exactly like Kitley's and they hit with Jared Dagey and they hit with some of these wide receivers? Yeah, they could be really good again. But my my money would not be on it for sure. So I'm going with six and seven on Western Kentucky. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.